Philip Wildman Hicks was a sports reporter who lived in the fast lane until a burglary gone wrong and a mafia hitman at the wrong side of a 357 Magnum changed everything. Author, comedian, and minister Philip Hicks was a rebel without a cause, but a life-changing experience behind prison bars changed all that. Don't go away. Uh, worship and wine, women and song and drugs getting faster and faster. I bartended at the hottest place in Aspen. All the celebrities went there. I was a workaholic. My girlfriend was a daughter of a preacher. We were going to church, but I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. It was all up here. You know, no matter how on the outside I acted like I had it together, deep down I didn't. His life has been described as a greenhouse for the impossible. And as an inspirational story in prison ministry, his book, The Cross and the 357 Magnum, has been described as the book of books. Today, the unpredictable Philip Hicks takes us on a journey that led to deliverance, and that same deliverance is available to you no matter what your journey may be. Okay, so you are now an accomplished comedian. Oh yes I am, I sure am Miss Debbie. My <laughs> name is Elvis Hicks, a hubba hubba hubba, and I work at the Esso Station, that's the Esso Station down in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, where Elvis Presley's from. Yeah, and uh, Elvis Presley was a, he was a kid, worked at the service station for me down in Tupelo, at the Esso, and I, and I told him everything he knew, and he ran off, ran off to Memphis to become a star. I, I'm the one who put him in the map. He ain't called me since. No. In fact, I can't uh, imagine why. Well, well, one reason I'm glad you brought that up because we used to sell live minnows and bait. You know, you yeah. ever go fishing? Never. Well, well you yes, go, but never like you've for, gone fishing. I'm sure. You never put a worm on the hook. No. Well, we used to sell worms and minnows. And Elvis, when he was just a kid, <laughs> we just slip live bait in the swimming trunks, and he would just swivel like that. Oh yes, sir. I, I taught him everything, you know. <laughs> So that's and, a secret. And then later on, he did martial arts. Whoa! You ever seen him do martial arts? No, can't say he, I have. He, he got his identity doing martial arts. But uh, he'd, whoa! But no, 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 I taught him everything. Because uh, uh, that, that, you think that's karate? No, that's pumping gas down in Tupelo. Oh, hubba, hubba, hubba. <laughs> yes, sir. So then is it safe to say, Philip, that you consider comedy to be an art? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, people are always drawing the cartoons about uh, uh, comedians and funny things. Bugs Bunny, it's, it's an art. Uh, t totally. Yeah, I, I, I can see oh, that. Oh, you're talking about like I, a stand-up art. See that. So, um, so then at any moment, we could be talking to Grandpa Dudley or, you know, a myriad of other personalities, I suppose. Is that true? Yes, sirree. Yes, sirree, Miss Debbie. My, name, my, my name's Grand. What is my name? My, my name. My name. Grandpa, Grandpa Dudley. Grandpa Dudley, yeah. I presume. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm a carpenter. Yes, sir. I, I, I make two specialties. I make outhouses and I make coffins. My, my, my motto is: When you gotta go, you gotta go. Yes. And uh, speaking of going, uh, well, we like this here town you live in here. I, I really like it. Oh, well, I'm really glad that you do. It is pretty nice. Oh, it's extra nice. In fact, I'm going to bring my wife back over here and, and, and to take her out to a special occasion because sometimes those special occasions I forget the birthday cards and anniversaries. Oh, no. I'm not sure your you. husband never forgets never, that. Never, ever forgets. But, 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 but I, I went to one fancy restaurant and I forgot her present again. But then I went in the bathroom. That's the indoor, the privy. That's yeah. the toilet. Got it. And yes. I, and yes. I, and, I, and I, they had a table on the wall that flipped out for me to tie my son up on. Cody's his name. And then they had a water. Tied your son on that. Well, yeah. I had to go do my prep, my, my business, All Miss, right. Miss, uh, Miss uh, Debbie. You know, and, and, too and, and much then, information. And then they had a watering trough on the wall with the breast mint at the bottom of it. And, and then, and then that's what I saw. That, 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 that this restaurant takes care of us, us husbands that forget their special occasions. Good point. They got souvenir necl necklaces on the wall. I done got me a souvenir necklace from my wife, and she's going to be so in love with me. So I brought one for you today. Here we go. Uh, this let is me for ask you. you. Uh, yes. You know, yeah. I'll, I'll hold on to this. I, I think it makes a very, very nice bookmark. Oh, yes, so, excellent you know, bookmark. But, uh, well, you are smart. Like right there. You, but you must be a high school graduate, aren't I you? I have to ask you, is your wife still with you? Oh, yes, she's a after, professional after clown. After that for, uh, for a pr birthday present. I mean, you're still together. Well, yeah, it, she did get mad because I spent all that money and everything, but then I told her it's free, so she's still with me. Okay, so then, um, so is there a point where Philip returns? 
Well, there's a song that Elvis sang about return to cinder. Yes. But I think that's about a letter, you know, <laughs> a letter. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm back with you now. So uh, I have to ask you, Philip. Yes, thank you. It's with one L. My pastor told me I got the L knocked out of my name when I had two L's in it, you know, but that's another story altogether. So how did you discover a knack for comedy? Well, I really believe that when God creates us in His image, He throws a little of this in there and a little of this, and He looked at me and said, hmm. A I lot think, of that. Yes, a lot of that. So uh, that's how I become one. It, 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 you've got a pot belly pig, too. I mean, I, I don't, he's not here today, but. I'm I not mean, a pot belly pig. I, Never, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call, I didn't call you a pot belly no, pig, but I, I never know, maybe that's one of your characters, I, that's I don't really true. know. That's true, actually, we had, we had five pigs over 16 years, people yes. knew me as the pig man, I was known as Cousin Filbert and my pet pig, Wilbert. And we'll and see some of that later in the yes, show. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. and the pig did tricks, and we brought to, when we went fishing, yes. uh, in children's evangelism, we used comedy and pig tricks to captivate children for about 16 years. And now, what is it that you do? Well, the Lord has brought me from the pig pen to the pulpit, uh, based on life experiences having been delivered from a life 15 prison sentence. I have much to share, much to encourage. So yes. our, our real passion is to go behind prison walls and take laughter, good wholesome laughter, yes. and take the Word of God. But you know, there are prisoners on both sides of the prison walls, so we every now and then get to go to a church too on the yeah. street. It's good. You know, you've been described as having a very gentle heart. Yes. So, uh, is that the way you've always been? I was, I was pretty tender-hearted as a kid. Of course, you know, being the middle son, I was had to get the, I got the hand-me-downs, this and that. But uh, my, my dad was out working a lot, selling mm -hmm. insurance. So I guess you might say I, I was a mama's boy because mom was there and my dad was out. I loved my dad so much, but he wanted to be a good provider. So I, I think part of that tenderness was transferred from my mom to me. Yeah. Of course, my wife says I'm too sensitive, too tender-hearted sometimes. But I think God looks upon us and wants us to have a tender heart. Because yes. uh, it, it's, it's an, a, analogous with gentleness, one of the fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. He wants to, has to have a gentle word in season. In fact, he even says that, that a kind word will even turn away wrath. So it's a good thing. Amen. Well, there's so much more to explore with you. I, I, I've got to figure out what mafia and the magnum and all these oh, things had yes. to do. So we're yes. going to be back for another segment Excellent. just a minute. Maybe Excellent. you can cover that with me. Okay. The cross and the 357 magnum. Dr. Sam Huddleston calls it an encouragement to those who don't follow Christ and a faith builder for those who do. More from the author Philip Hicks when we return. We're back with Philip Hicks, author and founder of A Merry Heart. And you have to tell me, Philip, how did you get the name Wild Man? I'm so glad you asked, Debbie. <laughs> Years ago, I was a head waiter at TGI Fridays in one of my not real dark days, but it was getting darker. And uh, one night, a, a guy walked out on my tab and all the red and white shirts were on him, you know, give us the money and all. We were like a family unit. Well, this guy didn't, he took issue with that because after work, we had our after work drinks sitting on the back porch of TGI Fridays in Memphis, Tennessee. And a car slowly pulled up in the parking lot with no lights turned on. It was this guy with a bunch of guys and they wanted to kind of force the issue, take issue with that. So they jumped out of the car and they wanted to swap hands, do a little fighting. And uh, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a guy open the trunk of his car and he pulled a rifle out or a shotgun or something. And you know, I probably wasn't a real smart thing to do, but instantly I just dove and knocked him down, gun and all, and they all freaked out, jumped up and ran, they took off. And so from that moment, they called me wild man. They just knew I was a martial arts guy, but actually I was shaking in my boots. But anyway. <laughs> So much for a while, man. Well, how did that turn into a stint in prison? Tell us about your life. Well, it was kind of the fast lane getting faster. and went from Memphis to Atlanta, Aspen, Colorado, worshiping wine, women, and song, and drugs getting faster and faster. Even uh, my, and you were my, a sports reporter. Well, I was. I was a sports report, reporter at, uh, in Memphis a little, and then Atlanta. Uh, but out in Aspen, I was a workaholic. I, was, uh, I wrote for a newspaper, a music magazine. I learned to eat fire. I was clumsy to fire-eating clown. I bartended at the hottest place in Aspen. All the celebrities went there. I was a workaholic. My girlfriend was the daughter of a preacher. We were going to church, but I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. It was all up here. 
And so uh, a guy came to town spending lots of money, and I was never a respecter of people or their stature, their money. Because you knew a lot of different people. You hung yeah. out with some. Well, people like Robin, Robin Williams, Williams, Hunter S. Thompson, yeah. Jimmy Buffett, and went to his wedding. It was a, it was a real surreal uh, life experience. And because I made them laugh, and I poured the liquor, I invited them to all their parties. And we were all headed for hell. Uh, it just, because um, it was fun for a season, mm -hmm. but I was deceived. And uh, I was raised in church. So the foundation was there, right. but I didn't have a relationship okay. with Jesus. So you had a you had a, ni a, a, a nice girlfriend. She was very nice. She loved me, uh, but I was very insecure. I was very jealous and all. I mean, she would come to the bar to watch me work because I was a workaholic, and guys would would hit on her. Uh, but and I was jealous. What are you doing talking to them? I was very just an insecure yeah, person. Yeah. You know, no matter how on the outside I acted like I had it together, deep down I didn't. So what happened? Well, I went down to Fort Lauderdale vacation, 1978, and a guy I met in Aspen owned the apartment, and I was going to spend two weeks of fun in the sun and come back to Aspen. But another guy came to stay at the same apartment, a friend of this fellow that owned it, and he uh, he was there to get his money back from a uh, from a drug deal gone sour, and I had no part of that. But he couldn't catch the guy, some guy named Big John, and uh, so he painted a real simple picture that I, if I would help him go into this apartment, he assured me nobody would be there, the money would be there, and he would split it with me. So I justified my involvement because he had been ripped off, but I didn't know what was about to take place. So then what happened? I climbed on down the, the rope off the top of a five-story building. He should have been one to do that, but I was Mr. Macho. Remember the right. guy in the Friday's exactly. parking lot? Exactly, you're going to make it look Jumped good. over the balcony, let him in the front door, found a lot of money. And I wanted to leave, but no, he wanted all of his money. He wanted to wait till the guy came home. And that's when my that true color surfaced. That was not the agreement that no, you he had. No, didn't, he didn't. That wasn't in the contract. But uh, I didn't want to be called a chicken. And I found some false courage and a bottle of wine. And pretty soon, bring on the army. And the guy came home. I didn't know he was going to have a gun. And I wrestled over his 357 Magnum with him. The third shot shattered my right leg, my femur bone. And then he put the gun to my head and went click twice. He was out of bullets. I shouldn't be here today. But my parents' prayers caught up with me. When he did this, what were you thinking? Well, since I'd had those drugs to anesthetize, it probably wasn't, I didn't have a lot of clarity. But I'm laying there. Since I'd been shot there, I'm sure there was a, a, a portion of shock. And so, you know, click, click, it's just a, a noise to me. I mean, it, it's just it's like an out-of-body or out-of-this-world experience. You know, the confusion, the fear, yeah, the, the yes, drugs combination. So I really wasn't thinking. How no, quickly no. things get out of control. They do. It doesn't take long at all. But, but of course, my life, I started out small in my compromise. Yeah. And so when you so, make wrong choices, it snowballs. So you never expected to be there when you began no. with your first compromise. Of course not. Yeah. Of course not. None of us do. Started out compromising in high school, rebellious against my parents. And then on, uh, I mean, in college, I was the president of the class. Everybody swarmed me, but, but then the drinking flowed, and then the drugs flowed. Uh, and then I joined three church groups on campus in college. I was a Baptist one day, a Presbyterian the next, uh, 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 probably, a, I don't know, a Methodist the next. If they'd had a semi of God, I'd have been right there. And using, dr and using drugs well, even Well, yeah, then. because it was, it was religion. It's an emptiness inside, okay. and I didn't know you could have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. Nobody took time to tell me. So it was religion, right. no relationship. Right. Right. And so it just, the, the drugs in, in, in the fast lane in Fridays mm -hmm. out in Aspen, I right. mean, it was, I shouldn't be here today. But that's how it happens. It One does. One little compromise, that's another it. compromise until you're at this. I've got to find out what happened more with Philip Hicks. Stay with us. From prison to comedy in one lifetime, that's the story of Philip Hicks, as inspirationally described in his book, The Cross and the 357 Magnum. Now, we left at a pivotal point. We were talking about how, uh, you know, we just make compromises a little right. at the beginning, and then they keep becoming um, stronger and stronger until we find ourselves really in a jam. And whether we're believers or not, Debbie, we're going to be judged what we do good and bad in the body. And when God talks about the little foxes that choke the vine, He wants us to be concerned about those little things that can get blown out of proportion so quickly. Speaking of blown out of proportion, you left us 
in a house with a lot of money and a gun to your head. Right. Uh, the guy ran out the door, threw his gun down. I later learned this in court. And the guy with me, who wasn't supposed to have a gun, shot him twice with a 44 Magnum. Now, he should have died. But God loves him just as much as he loves us, and he kept him alive. Well, uh, that night, the police arrived. And I'm the only one who was arrested because everybody else had fled the scene, if you will, and was taken to a neighboring hospital. Two detectives read me my Miranda rights, and I very naively waived my rights and gave them a full confession on tape to cover for the guy that got away. It was full of lies because I didn't want my mom to find out, but moms always find out. But nevertheless, they have a confession. And then they took me to another hospital, six months in traction, six months in a body cast. But it was on the 19th day, they took the guard away and the medication away. And the next day, a young man was transferred from another floor, from above, that's a great picture, and brought down to put in the bed next to me. And he heard my tears. I was 29 years of age, probably the first time I'd ever cried as a grown man. Of course, I cried a lot with my dad. He whipped me a lot, of course. And, but uh, he heard my tears. He was sensitive, and the spirit would just led him to pull the curtain back, and uh, this guy uh, began engaging in conversation. Didn't preach at me or nothing, but there was something different about yes, him. Yes. It's the analogy, make a friend, be a friend, bring a friend to Jesus. He asked me those two important questions. If you were to die tonight, do you know for sure you'll go to heaven? Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I would. Mm -hmm. And then he said, for by grace are you saved through, through faith. faith. It's a free gift, yes. not of works, lest anybody should boast. Yes. That night I received Jesus into my heart. Wow. I received the gift of eternal life. And one night later, my hospital bed was surrounded by people from this guy's church with a birthday cake and presents and, oh. and to welcome me into the family yes. of God. It's my journey started then. Uh, after that, I was encouraged to tell the truth at my trial, seven months later in a body cast. The guy that shot me testified. The tape, the confession was evidence. It was stacked against me and my public defender, he thought I was a nut anyway, because I always wanted to talk about the Lord and what he was doing. And, but he was doing a good job. And he said, don't say a word. He said, you're facing life 30 in prison. He said, don't say a word. I said, no, I've got to tell the truth. Wow. And so they had let me talk, their first mistake. And I told them the truth. And it flipped out the judge, the prosecutor, the jury. They could not believe that I would do something so stupid, so foolish as to admit guilt. The judge stopped the trial, sent the jury in. Three weeks later, I was sentenced to life plus 15 years in prison flown up to a prison hospital. Two doctors donated their services and rebuilt my leg from the, the Heisman Trophy doctors, University of Florida. Hasn't helped my throwing arm any, but I can <laughs> dance now. And uh, it was about a year later, a letter arrived in my prison cell, and it was from the Florida Supreme Court. They had changed the law and vacated my One whole of the inmates in my room was always working on legal stuff, and I heard he was pretty good at it. In fact, once another prisoner told me he was a jailhouse lawyer. One day I asked him about the list of errors and what he thought about my chances for a reversal, and he didn't know if that was going to happen. But then later on in the story, it talks about how he said there may be exactly. hope. And that one, and even though he wasn't a believer, that's okay. God speaks to the just and the unjust. Uh, that one of those errors is what God used to reverse my whole sentence because when I foolishly told the truth, it confounded the judge, as Corinthians reminds yes, us. Yes. And if he made a mistake, forgot to read your instruction. Yeah. It was based on that one error that this guy uh, said it, that might You might also happen. said when a person receives Jesus as Savior, a battle begins oh, in the yes. spiritual realm for that person's soul. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've got a target on our life. Yeah. And the enemy knows our weaknesses. And you've dedicated your life now to seeing as many prisoners as possible Amen. find Christ. Yes. Prisoners in prison and right. those of us outside of prison who deal with spiritual issues. Yes, both right. sides of the prison yeah. wall. So then uh, we've not seen, uh, before we go, uh, uh, there's so much to cover. Yes. But I want them to see, is it Cousin Filbert? Cousin Filbert That's and my you pet brought? pig, Wilbert. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now your pet pig, Wilbert, has yes. retired. We donated him he's to an Pastor actor that kind of uh, Destiny Ranch, and so he's in hog heaven now. Uh, but uh, so he brought home the bacon for, for 14 <laughs> years, but now uh, we've um, God has moved me into a new identity, yeah. the serious side of funny. Yeah. And so we're bringing good laughter to the comedy characters and the followed by the Word of God. Well, we've met a couple today, but let's meet Cousin Philbert. Okay, right. sounds good. Here we go. All right, come on over here and line up, guys. Everybody say, hey, Wilbert. Hey, Wilbert. All right, birthday girl, what's your name? Destiny, come over here. 
God says he's got a destiny for all of our lives. Come here. You might not see it right now, but if you'll give him all of your heart and begin to grow into a relationship with him, then you will walk in that destiny. Everybody stop talking because this is a very dangerous stunt. He could actually jump up and attack destiny. We don't want that to happen. Just kidding, destiny. Okay. Now, destiny picks can't give you a high five. You know that. Hey, you're going to stick it. Straighten your hat out, woman. Okay, stick your hand down and say shake, and he'll lift his hoof. There we go. Say shake. There we go. Give her a big hand, Destiny. Everybody say happy birthday, Destiny. Okay, have a seat. Did I hear anybody say ham dunk? Okay, Joshua, roll the ball right down there, Joshua. Excellent. Good shot, Joshua. All right, here we go. Get it, Wilbur. Get the ball, Wilbur. Wilbur says, that I'm going to nibble on her toes out there. That's tofu. Get the ball, Wilbur. Here we go, boy. He spins to the left and right. He's going to go up. It's going to be a ham dunk. He drops it in. Yeah! Well, it's clear to see you were once in bondage, but you're yes. set free, and now Amen. you have a merry heart. Amen. Do, would you pray for people who are in bondage yes. right now before we go out um, yes. for this show? Okay. Yes. Father God, I just ask you to just to release your precious spirit in the lives of yes. everyone watching this program and that you would wake up their hearts, God. Yes. Give them a heart for you. Give them a love for you and a hatred for the things that have held them uh, in captivity. We take authority over the chains. We break yes. them in Jesus' yes. precious name. Yes. And God, I just pray you would overtake them now. Just in wake the them up Lord. and bring them to yes. a place, a, a new depth, God, of a relationship yes. with you, a new place of freedom. I pray uh, Hebrews 1, 9 over their lives. He that loves righteousness and hates yes. darkness, you'll give them an all of gladness twice above their companions. In, the in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And we'll have information on the screen later because if anyone wants to have you come to their church or their organization, That'd you're be available. Wonderful. Yes, right. I've got my calendar in the car. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate today a visit from from Grandpa Dudley and uh, Elvis, Elvis Hicks. Hicks and from Cousin Philbert and, uh, of course, Philip Hicks. Laughter is good for the soul, and the same can be said for finding meaning in your life, just as our guest has done. Mm -hmm. To find out more about this life-changing experience, call the number on your screen. And for more information on today's guest, go to AmeriHeart.com or KTLN. TV. We rely on your financial support to make programs like this one possible. Thanks for being with us and join us again next week.